afternoon again to the beautiful families of Sister Jazz and Brother Rodney. Again, I am Minister Anim Walimu, and it's my absolute pleasure to be here today as officiant um, and also as co-witness to this beautiful occasion, the wedding of Sister Jazz and Brother Rodney. We also celebrate the most powerful force in this universe, and that is black love. For them and for us, this celebration is about black love. And as we continue in this ceremony, we also celebrate their commitment and recognize the Supreme Court's decision to affirm the constitutional right for any two people to join in marriage and their statement, and I quote, that no union is more profound than marriage, for it embodies the highest ideals of love, fidelity, devotion, sacrifice, and family. A marriage's dynamic allows for two people to find a life that cannot be found alone, for marriage becomes greater than just the two persons. Rising from this most basic of human needs, marriage is essential to our, mo to our most profound hopes and aspirations." End quote. So just as marriage is essential to our most profound hopes and aspirations, so too is witnessing and supporting our loved ones as they ascend to the highest peaks of their lives. And so we're not merely here as passive attendees, um, but we are crucially important to be witnessed today and indeed as pillars to this day. I am the oldest sister, and I remember when we first came. We came in 89 from Uganda. And Jazz was born in 89. I was 15. I put the diapers on you. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome you all for coming. I know we all come from different countries, and we made this our home. It hasn't been a journey, I'm sure, for all of you to adjust. But definitely hasn't been easy for our family. But the blessing of the divine, the universe source, I call them. He has guided us. I'm so proud of you. It hasn't been easy, I know, but you never gave up. And God blessed us all. We all became educated. We're all college graduates. And we did it on ourselves. I am pr I'm always bragging about you at work. She went to Cornell. She went to Princeton. They said, oh my God, I said, yeah, we got some nerds in our family. But what can say how I'm proud of you? And I never knew for this day I always thought that you would never be married. Oh my God, you're so picky. <laughs> Even keep a boyfriend, I was like, no, she's not gonna do it. And you beat us all to it. <laughs> I'm like, well, but I'm so proud of when I met Rodney. You guys came to visit me in San Francisco and every week they did, door, what do you call it, DoorDash? I was like, they don't eat, they DoorDash, DoorDash. I'm like, can we cook some food? And right now, I'm going to get Jasmine something. I'm like, oh, my God. But the care he gave, he was so attentive towards you. And that's the first thing I saw. He was so caring. He was, Jasmine, want this. Jasmine, want this. And he will just get up and go get it. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, what a man, you know? And I respected you for that, Rodney. Mm -hmm. So I knew that she's in good hands. And thank you for loving her. Thank you for taking care of her. Thank you for putting her to see the world. Wow. They were like, oh, I'm over here. I'm like, how in the world did you get over there? You want spring break? Like, I've been working all my life. I haven't went to Hawaii yet. <laughs> Jesus, you know? <laughs> and I'm like, I want your life. So now only thing I pray that she learns how to cook for you. Lord, learn how to cook. Learn how to cook. She's a good cook. I know she does. I know she's working on it. I'm a better cook. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> but that's why I said I love you to death. I wish you the best. And the best gift I can give is communicate, love each other. If you com keep the doors of communication open, be honest with each other. It won't be happy donkey all the time. But listen to each other. Sit it out. If you can't sit it out, walk it off and come back and talk it out. And the rest of the divine will guide you. To you, my baby sister. And Rodney. <laughs>
I want to start off by saying how proud I am of my big brother Rodney. He has shown me throughout the years what determination, ambition, focus, and accomplishing your goals by any means necessary means. Thank you for always being a phone call or text away. Jazz, you have been such a sweet, funny, and loving person since the day I met you. Today you were absolutely stunning as you came down the aisle. Thank you for taking this ride with Rodney as we officially welcome you to the family. I encourage you both to continue to be patient with each other, put God first in all that you do, love continuously. Remember, sacrifices will be a constant reminder of why you both said I do. I love you both and I pray for a lifetime of love. I end with this quote, a successful marriage requires falling in love many times, always with the same person. Cheers to Mr. and Mrs. Jonas. <laughs> Rodney. The love of my life. First of all, we're here. It's our wedding day. <laughs> As I think about our love, I always think about the saying, a revolutionary woman's heart will never be won passively. I think about our journey from early courting days, Ubering across Central Park, hanging out in each other's neighborhoods, to exploring every corner of the globe together. You always put us first. You sacrifice and rearranged your life for my fulfillment, and you've always pushed for our love. I love the parts of you that everyone sees, um, your genius, your joy, your kindness, but I love the sides of you that few people get to see that I know so well. Rodney the artist, Rodney the poet, Rodney the film critic, the writer, the dreamer, the visionary. You've always dreamed big for me and for us, and inspired me to dream bigger right along with you. You always tell me, don't settle. <laughs> we can have anything, we can do anything. In one of the hardest moments of our relationship, when I was applying to business school, I felt like everything was caving in around me. I was losing sleep and sanity. I was burnt out at work. My body was giving out on me. And I was straining friendships, chasing some far off dream of a better life and breaking generational curses. I'll never forget one day in your apartment, without warning, I burst into tears, like right now. <laughs> um, it was like a bad Mariah Carey sliding down the elevator moment in her videos. Um, and I didn't know how to explain myself to you. This is a side of me no one ever sees. And the best part of it is that you already knew and you knelt down with me and you held me and chewed away your nosy neighbors. <laughs> I knew then that, as you always say now, you were a whole husband. <laughs> you see me, you know me, and you love me. When I imagine our life together, I see a life where you're my water in the desert. I know I can run and jump and slip and fall because you'll be there for me, and you'll remind me of all the times that I fly. Your love, this love, has been anything but passive. It's been revolutionary. It's a raging fire that burns away anything untrue. I vow today in front of our family to love who you are standing in front of me today and to also love the man that you will grow to be. I promise to love you even when I don't like you. <laughs> I promise to remember all the sweet times when things get hard. If we can eat a good meal and sit together at the beach, even if they have to wheel us there or teleport us in the future, we'll always find our way back to each other. I promise to always choose you first above all else. I promise to blend our two cultures together into one. For the Haitians, we will have endless dili. <laughs> for the Ugandans, a lot of muchele. Yes. That's rice for everyone else. Um, I wish I met you sooner so that I could love you longer. But today, it makes sense why I had to wait for this kind of love. 
Rodney, my love, my soulmate, my protector, my best friend. I choose to walk with you because you've held my feet in your lap. You're the home that I found after a very long journey. I choose you in a hundred lifetimes to forever and ever and ever. I love you. I find it fitting that today we infuse wisdom of one of our most revered ancestors who came about during the Harlem Renaissance, Zora Neale Hurston. And it was Zora Neale Hurston who said that love, yes love, makes you crawl out from its hiding place. Well I met Rodney 13 years ago and I won't conjecture about whether or not he was in a hiding place then, but I can say today we see a man who's clearly standing boldly before us in the open desert of California in as declarative in public as a posture as anyone can maintain. And we also witnessed our sister Jazz, a woman who bravely put her guard down and allowed her spirit to both see and be seen. We witnessed both of these brilliant and beautiful souls whose love has helped the other to hide a little bit less and to stand resolute in love. Long ago, early in our dating, I shared with you a quote from one of my favorite songs. It, I'm not gonna sing, but <laughs> it's uh, you are the only thing in any room you're ever in. This quote is as true for me today as it was the day I met you. As true for me now as when you first said hello to me at, as we walked into that Italian restaurant on our first date and I saw you standing there and it was like no one else was there with us. Just you. Brilliant, smiling, laughing, beautiful. It's amazing to think about how that one first meeting started everything we've experienced as a couple since then. There have been ups and downs, sure, but so many ups. We have challenged each other and made each other better in so many ways. It is a supreme happiness to have my family here and your family here as we join to become one family. I love your laugh. Sometimes your laughter comes out as big, bubbly bursts of squealing joy, like when Wendy Williams says something really scandalous on a TV, <laughs> kind of like that. And sometimes it's, it's a simpler laugh, a warm, quiet chuckle, almost a smile. Like when I say just the right thing to catch you off guard while we're eating dinner. I love all of your laughs. I promise to always make you laugh. The world needs to hear your laughter as much as possible. I promise to be a refuge and warmth for you when it is cold outside. I know you are destined for greatness, and with that comes sometimes trials in a cold world. But our marriage will be a source of comfort in this world, no matter what, I promise. I promise to not let you settle, and to do everything I can and everything you need to help you achieve your dreams. I promise to be your travel buddy and to see the world with you. And I promise to kneel down to take off your shoes and socks when we come home from a night out, no matter how tired I am, and put your hair in the mouchoir. <laughs> uh, the head wrap. I promise you loyalty and fidelity. I promise honesty and openness and to over-communicate. I promise compassion and humility. I promise to apologize and change when I'm wrong and to tell you with care when I have wants and needs also. I promise to accept you as you are, especially as we grow and change. Because change is inevitable, but our bond is constant, never strengthening. Most importantly, I promise you safety. Physical safety, emotional safety, spiritual safety. Anything your heart needs. Any moment of vulnerability or weakness you can share with me. And I promise I will give you, hold you up and give you my strength and I will share with you my vulnerability so that we can be stronger together. The greatest thing I've ever done is fall in love with you and ask you to marry me. I love you, Jess.
It is with pleasure that my husband, the, husband, the Jonas family, and I welcome every one of you that travel from far to come and celebrate Jazz and Wadney Union. Wadney, as your mother and in behalf of your father and the rest of the family, we are so proud that you grew up to be such a determined young man. Your path wasn't easy, but with the help of the mighty God, from the beginning, you knew what you wanted in life. It wasn't easy to see you leaving the house at such an early stage of your life. But whose mother will refuse a nice scholarship from MIT right after high school? Your goal in life is almost accomplished. Thank you for handing such a beautiful lady to the Jonas family. Married life is not easy, but as my son, I hope you well. Jazz, I personally thank you for accepting to be part of the Jonas family. You will not regret it. The Jonas men can be tough, sometimes difficult to handle. <laughs> <You're not again. laughs> but girl, to be honest with you, they are good men who take care of their, fa their female. Jazz, you are entering a new f version of your life. Being a girlfriend and becoming a wife, it's different. Men things when they, they own you when they're married. They're so quick to tell you they pay for your ass. Sorry about that. But my dear do daughter, know and practice your standards. Jazz, again, I welcome you to the Jonas, and we are good people and we love each other. Don't ever hesitate to call us when needed. We are far, we are far from distance, but by heart, we are close to you. Don't be shy. Again, Jazz at One Need thank everyone that had left their responsibility to come and join them in their special day. To both of you, congratulations. And remember, with God, everything is possible. Thank you. everybody ladies and gentlemen the Janis family the Suboga family and friends and relatives thank you very much for coming thank you thank you thank you uh, mr. and mrs. Janis congratulations you've made us very very proud very proud congratulations you are good to go uh, I really don't have much to say. I'm just so happy, so happy, so happy. Uh, on that note, I want to toss to Mr. and Mrs. Janice for the longest, 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 longest life. Happy life. Cheers. Thank you. But I'm so proud and happy to have all my family, my kids, and they come to support Wadney and Jazz, and I'm very proud of Wadney and Jazz for what they accomplished tonight. And all I can say is wish them the best and be happy for them and tell them good luck and my God bless them. Thank you. far away from the other side of the country, from the other side of the state, from farther and more difficult journeys than that, even if the distance is not more. It's, we so appreciate the love that we feel from all of you, beating everyone on Jazz's side of the family, having people on my side of the family, seeing you and all again. Every person who could help has helped. 
I, I just I'm blown away by how loving everybody has been. Um, I'm gonna stop talking. <laughs> No, thank you everyone again, as Rodney said, for coming. Thank you for the amazing toast celebrating us. Um, obviously, it's been a very hard year for everyone, and getting to get all of us together in this way that is safe and comfortable, but still fun, and we're going to get down when the music starts. Um, <laughs> thank you all for being a part of this and just celebrating again black love in a time when it is under attack. <laughs> and. I think in our relationship, we always talk about our village, and I always ask Rodney, if we get married, who are you gonna go to if like, you're mad at me? And all of these people in this room are people that we can go to for advice, for, for support. Um, and all of you being here means that you're part of our village forever and our legacy, and we are so proud of the people in this room and all you've done to be part of raising us and making us who we are. Um, and then last but not least, before we forget, we also want to thank all our amazing, amazing creative team that you see all around this room who are incredible. The food, the catering, our amazing planner, Kenzie, our venue coordinator, Carly, our amazing photo and video team that's been following us all day and getting Rodney to smile, which is really hard to do in pictures. Um, thank you all. It looks beautiful. Like, we could not have dreamed this when we were in quarantine, sad and crying every day about our wedding. So thank you for making this amazing, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.